got everything packed in the back of the car and I'm heading out for another winter camp, a solo winter camp. This time I'll be gone for four nights. Come along guys, come along and follow me outdoors. Okay, so I've got everything out of the car and ready to go. Everything I'm taking today. Got my water with me again, as of last time. I don't really want to melt my water. It just take too long. It's very late in the day again today. It's uh, about midday. I've got about four hours of light to get in. Everything set up. Whew. Okay, I've made it into my campsite. I didn't film the trek in because, well, you might have seen that on the last series of videos. If not, go back and uh, watch those. It took me probably uh, 35 minutes, 40 minutes maybe from the car again to get in. Uh, snow condition is not too bad. It's not exactly deep. Um, We've had, a, we've had a bit of a warm spell over the last week or two, so that's uh, packed stuff down a bit. Everything's compacted a bit. Here's the, the wood that I, I visited the stash last time I fit, made a video. And I made the comment, let's see how much snow there is on top when I come back. Well, there's actually not that much because of what I just said. It's been quite warm and you can see this is, this is quite wet looking snow so yeah everything's everything's shrunk a bit um, it's starting to snow a bit now there's still a little bit of blue sky up there but the weather generally comes from this way and from this way well here it comes by the looks of it so I better get a move on and uh, start getting things set up I might just catch my breath, grab something to drink first. But it's very good to be back, back in the woods again. Looking forward to four nights out here on my own. Ah, I'm already feeling at peace. <laughs> okay, I'll get a move on. Like uh, I've filmed all of this before in the previous series, setting up the tent and everything like that. So I'm probably just going to go ahead and um, I'll get back to you once we're all set up. I want to try and do something a little bit different with the stove this time, so I'll film that. Stay with me. Just finished walking out a spot where I'm going to put my tent, just flattening the snow down with my snowshoes stage one I'm sure I keep covering this microphone mm -hmm. stage one complete moving on stage two stage two complete So what I, what I want to try and do this time is to have long poles that go basically all the way through the tent and out the other side and go through the legs of the wood stove so that when the floor melts the poles are actually in the snow outside here so and the hopefully they'll keep the stove at its original level and it doesn't sink and I won't have to readjust it all the time. That's the theory anyway. So first thing I have to do is try and find some straight poles, which in this forest is a little hard because everything gets beaten up by the snow so much. And most trees are pretty, pretty gnarled up, or the smaller ones anyway. So I'm gonna try, I don't wanna cut down any live trees. Um, so maybe some smaller saplings I'll take where there's too many in one area, like through here, there's a lot of regrowth and a lot of smaller, thinner things. So I'm gonna go and have a scout around over there and see if I can find um, two poles that will do the job for me. 
So I found a nice candidate here. A bit of dead something or other. Unfortunately, most of it's down there. So I have to dig around it a bit to try and get enough, enough of the pole. But anyway, there's one. So I'll try and dig down a bit. Well, I won't try, I will dig down a bit and get as much of that as I can. Eh, a bit thin up the top there. It looks a bit old and perhaps rotten. But uh, the main bit of it's pretty good. So let's get some of this. Well, that worked out quite well. By digging down, I didn't even have to cut it. It was, it was already broken at the bottom, but I don't know if you can see, I've dug down and I probably got about, well, it was up to here. It was to here and the, so that's how much snow we've got. We've got, well, it must be three or three or four feet of snow there. I don't even know if that's all the way down to the bottom, but great. Didn't even have to cut it. So it's pretty, pretty long pole there. Just lay that down so you get some idea. There it is. Whoop. So that's why I might even be able to get both of them out of there. It's a bit fat at the bottom though, so the stove's not going to go through. But there's one. Um, and the added bonus is I managed to dig my toilet already. <laughs> and that goes down quite all the way to the ground there, I'm pretty sure. I can see a little bit of bamboo down there, so. But anyway, nice, nice job. Let's find another one. Hmm, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Okay, I've had a good look around and I can't find anything as easy and dead as the first one. But I have found this, uh, this ash tree here, which is quite thin and uh, there's another ash tree here and there's a cherry tree there and lots of other smaller things around here. So this area is very crowded out. And uh, this, this ash here looks like it will do the job quite nicely. It's very, very thin. And again, most of it's down there. So I'm going to dig down a bit more and try and get as much of it as I can. What are these vines on here? No poison ivy, that's a good thing. This okay. Two straightish poles. They should do the job. So here's the idea with the with the poles. I've got them coming through the outside of the tent there. I can't see what I'm filming. And then through here and then through the through there and then I'll, I'm gonna go and pull them pull them out the other side of the tent so we've got a few feet on the outside of that side and a few feet out that side or more hopefully and then when this bit sinks they should those ends should stay where they are at the same level and support this that that's the theory we'll see how it goes everything is set up now Time to get the uh, stove going. Here comes the weather again. a while to get it going this wood that I have here and have here and the remnants of it there was all from what I'd left here previously and it was of low quality <laughs> quite damp it's been out in the elements for my well, year or so um, 
and as it was already split it uh, absorbed quite a bit of moisture and froze and so anyway it was a bit tough to get this thing going last night I got it going in the end after filling up the tent with smoke a couple of times and <laughs> anyway today's mission will be to gather better firewood for, for the remainder of the trip um, so I'll get on that after I've had my emergency morning coffee which again I'm doing on this little camping jet stove uh, much easier much quicker than trying to boil it on here um, it will eventually boil on there but this is done in five minutes max so that's a good thing anyway I'm gonna have my coffee and um, then I'll get out there and uh, get stuff done So I've decided I'd make some um, bacon while I've got the stove going this morning. I'm just going to have a bacon sandwich. I finished my coffee. That was delicious. Um, just a bit of a plug there for GSI Outdoors. Although they don't do anything for me. Or C to Summit. They don't do anything for me. Coleman don't do anything for me. And it's a Captain Stag fry pan. They don't do anything for me. Nyko Stoves. They make bloody good stoves. Snow Trekker tents, probably the best tents in the world. Right, I've just got some plugs out and over and done with. Although I make nothing from that and it's really worth nothing to me. Kind of like YouTube, which is worth nothing to me now, especially since they've just changed their terms and conditions uh, for, for smaller channels like mine. Um, I don't actively promote my channel. I figure that anyone who's interested in this type of stuff might stumble across my channel and perhaps like it and subscribe to the channel but YouTube's just come out and um, changed their their terms which is now smaller channels or all channels have to have 1,000 subscribers and over 4,000 hours watch time um, so basically my channel would be demonetized in February the 20th of February I think it is which really doesn't make any difference to me because out of the, I don't know, 20 or 30,000 views that I've had, maybe a little bit more over the year, I've had the channel going. I think YouTube has, well, I have, they haven't actually paid me yet because there's a threshold, but I think I've made about 5,000 Japanese yen, which works out to probably about 45 American dollars. So... Thanks YouTube for screwing me out of my $45 a year to, to provide content for your network. Um, I'm not sure what you're thinking behind that is, but um, I'm sure you're hurting 90% of your creator base. Good on you YouTube. That's my rant out of the way, and I'm going to get on with my breakfast and have a breakfast, a breakfast sandwich. Yeah, I'll have a breakfast sandwich. I'll have a bacon sandwich. Thanks for listening to my gripe, but honestly... YouTube, what are you doing? Mm -mm. Bacon sandwich. Mmm. Bacon sandwich. The remnants of my coffee. Mm. Look, there's a little bit left in there. I'll keep that one for later. Just munch down on this and then it's time to get outside and get some work done. currently 17 degrees Celsius inside the tent that's at this low level and minus 5.4 outside and uh, looks like it's gonna snow heavily today a bit of a late morning 11.09 a.m. and that's the update from from the weather station with a mouthful of bacon sandwich mum said don't talk with your mouth full I drank that last night <laughs> whiskey a dairy me that's why there wasn't much filming let's have a pan around the inside of the tent messy tent there we go water food in the box cooking the station cooking device 
camera bag, haven't taken the camera out yet. Everything's been filmed on my iPhone so far. And the sleeping quarters. There we go. Got a new knife. Oh, new knife. I've got the Garberg. It's not obviously the Garberg uh, sheath. This is the sheath from my Spyderco. But yes, there we go. Full Tang Mora Garberg. Quite a sturdy knife. I'm quite enjoying it so far. It's a little weighty, but that's a good thing. Anyway. Mora Garberg. It fits nicely in this sheath actually for the Spyderco. I bought the multi sheath um, for it and I wasn't impressed with it at all. I should have gone with the leather sheath. So I swapped out it for this at the moment. I bought a lighter with me and it's empty. So that was a good move. Anyway, fire still. No problems there. Babble babble. Got some food, more bacon there, eggs, some veggie stuff, mushroom, onions. In here I've got some bread and some curry, some rice, some onions, another pot of whiskey. Is that called a pot? I don't know what it's called. Flask. Um, and some chicken and steak. And that's about it. <clears throat> Update. Over. A little bit of snow overnight. It's supposed to snow quite a bit today. It's just starting a little bit now, so not that much last night though. Maybe a centimetre. Very chilly though. Have to get some some firewood sorted out today. The stuff that I had last night which I got from here wasn't good at all. It was pretty much damp throughout and I had lots of trouble keeping the fire going. And, um, so I'm gonna collect some new dry standing. Actually, I've got this, this stuff here, which we collected a few years ago, which I'll split up. It's uh, some, some spruce. That should, that should be good. Well, it's the evening of the second night. Uh, it's about 6, 6, 5.30, 6 p.m. And I've just uh, been outside splitting up some wood. So a bit warm now. Uh, I had a friend visit me today, which was great. He bought me some beer. Oh, my beer's frozen. It is frozen too. <laughs> mm, nice Sapporo classic. Frozen. That it is. So for this series of videos I haven't been doing much filming at all and I brought my, my DLSR, DSLR with me and I haven't used it once. I've filmed everything so far. On my iPhone so this is probably just going to be a very short video that I make um, very short I think just a recap I mean I made the series of videos last time I came out here um, and it's basically all the same stuff over and over again so unless something really exciting happens like I get attacked in the middle of the night by a bear <laughs> not gonna happen um, unless something really exciting happens, then, you know, it's probably just going to be a short video of me out here on my own winter camping in my snow trekker tent, which is doing great, I must say, um, with the, with the Nyko stove. My wood has been not so great this time around. Um, it's just damp. 
and so I'm, I'm having a bit of trouble keeping the stove going but you know it's all part of the thing and I'm learning I'm learning more every time I come out here so that's a good thing anyway I'm going to get this get this stove cranked up now and uh, get on to cooking myself some dinner which is going to be a steak tonight uh, some mushrooms and um, yeah just general camp food the type of stuff that I like to eat when I'm when I'm out here so, um, pr I've already prepared it uh, it's been marinating for a day or two it's in the box down here this stuff's all nice and cold in the tent um, sitting on the floor there on the snow so it's basically a little refrigerator so anyway enough of my waffle babble and uh, I'll get on with cooking something up once once I get this stove cranking as you can see at the moment not doing too well so I've got some chicken and some mushroom and some onion on the fry at the moment I was gonna have steak tonight but the steak was uh, pretty much frozen so cooking from a frozen steak would have just been a bit of tough meat so I'll probably have that for tomorrow lunch I'll let it thaw out a little bit first and uh, get it up to tent temperature before cooking but so we're here we've got some chicken um, and some onion and mushroom frying up and it smells great in here so I'll be feasting on this fairly shortly I think quick dinner update so I had my dinner it was lovely and uh, I've just come outside can't see anything. I'm trying to film with my head torch here. I'm getting a little bit of snow at the moment. My tent's, my tent's getting a little bit buried, I think. Move that out. Going on out here, a minus minus ten point eight Celsius at the moment. Not too bad. I think I'm supposed to get down to about minus fifteen or sixteen tomorrow night. So I just came out and checked the spark arrestor, and it was pretty much clogged. So. That was having an effect on the stove, that's for sure. I'm going back inside now. But apparently there's gonna be quite a bit of snow tonight, so. I don't know if you can see anything there. Probably not. It's starting to snow a little bit. Right, back inside. No Ooh, nice and warm in here. Lovely. So here's the update on the uh, new method for setting up the, the stove here. I put these uh, two long branches, or small trees, all the way through the tent, from one side all the way through the other side there, and out the other side. And they both protrude out into the snowbank outside. And so this is the second day. Sorry, I get in the shadow there from the head torch. This is the second day. And you can see here, possibly if we don't get too much shadow, this stove is actually not touching the ground here. But it's, it's 
using these bits of wood which go through the legs. I've had to shim them a little bit on this end. This side is actually touching, but that side's not touching. And so the stove itself, since I've, oh, go away Shadow, since I set it up, this hasn't moved at all. Normally it, it's dropping by now on the second day and nice and secure here as well. The stove has kind of got a little bit of an angle to it. It's dropped down a little bit this way, this way. But this is much better than my previous setups. Um, yeah, I guess you can see best here if I get the shadow out of the way. The feet, the feet aren't touching. The snow is all melting under here and it will just continue to melt. That foot is at two or three centimeters off the, off the ground there. And again, it's just using this pole, which is not gonna move. It's not gonna sink because it's outside and it's, it's frozen outside. So I, I'm, I'm a fan of this method. I could see what was going on. So yeah, just an update there. Currently the stove is cranking away. It's doing quite well. Although we've got a temperature of 13.3 inside the tent and minus 10.2 outside currently. Uh, Although it was up to about 18 in here a little bit bit earlier. Um, yeah, it's quite comfortable at 13 degrees. Still got a bit of wood left here, which I'm still drying out. I get a little bit over there. I get a pan of water on the top there to keep the tent somewhat humidified otherwise it just dries out too much that's about the shape of things just a little bit of an update on the long poles all the way through the tent all the way through the tent oh, whoops empty beer cans oh what's that oh, a small bottle of whiskey never mind it's a bit of a mess in here, isn't it? It's a bit pokey though. I mean, come on. It's all good, don't worry. Plus I can cut all this out and post. And you'll be none the wiser as to my messy tent. Wow, that's six minutes of babble. <laughs> so about an hour ago, I took the spark arrest off the top of the chimney outside. And it's made a remarkable difference. If it's really burning, I don't get much smoke coming out of the fire at all, but that's great. Toasty. So, another lesson learned. All learning experiences, that's for sure. Probably won't be using the Spark Arresta much anymore. It clogs up quickly and uh, seems to choke the stove. So I'm getting much better results without that. Still, when I open the door, you know, we get a bit of smoke loss. Like that, I don't know if you can see that, but that's to be expected. Lovely. Thanks for watching, and uh, if you liked the video, please click the thumbs up below and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. That is a great thing. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you on the next video.